you go. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name's Belinda. I'm a clinical Pilates instructor and yoga teacher. So um, tonight I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the differences between yoga and Pilates and also clinical Pilates as well. So I'm looking around, I know that there's a few people here who've done yoga before, um, or quite a lot. And Pilates as well, there's a few familiar faces here. So I'm actually going to throw it out to you guys first and just ask if you were to say in you know, one word, what is yoga, what would you think of? Relaxation. Yeah, yeah nice, Kayla. Yeah. Flexibility. Flexibility. Yeah. What if I were to say Pilates? What comes to mind? Strength training. I like that one. What did you say, Nikki? Stretching. Stretching and strength training. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, I suppose yoga, pretty commonly, I suppose, in the Western world, a lot of people seem to think yoga is stretching and flexibility. Um, but it's more of a whole system. So if you practice yoga, you're actually practicing a new way of life, which involves um, the spiritual sense, uh, the physical sense, and um, also the mind as well. So the whole system is focused on basically achieving inner peace or stillness in, within the mind. So it is really good if you've got an anx anxious, busy mind, yoga is very helpful for relaxation. Um, so if we take a closer look at the physical, mental and spiritual parts of yoga, you would find meditation is often in a class because that helps with clearing the mind. For the physical aspect, aspect, we go through what we call asana practice, which is the physical movements and um, flowing from one position to the next or perhaps holding a pose for a number of minutes. Um, and the spiritual aspect as well. So if you practice yoga and you truly believe in the method, then what goes on in your mind, you would kind of be thinking of a place of love, kindness and compassion for yourself. So thinking kind positive thoughts about yourself. Same for everybody else in the world. So regardless of whether someone's your friend or family member or maybe just, you know, the checkout chick at Coles in some suburb you've never been to, you think of that person as being your equal and you show love, kindness, compassion and respect to them. Um, and to the universe around you, to, to all living beings and plants and everything else. So... Um, yeah, I suppose the point I'm getting at is yoga is not just about the physical movement. Um, so it's a whole approach to life based on balance and harmony. So in, within that, I suppose, um, if we were to send two of you off onto a mat right now and say, hey, you do yoga and you do Pilates, from a distance, it looks quite similar, right? So we move through some of the same poses, but the purpose that you're doing it for is quite different. So... With doing yoga, you're kind of practicing the poses to um, align the chakras. So I suppose the belief with yoga is that you have seven different energy points within the body. And by doing certain poses, you supposedly remove energy blockages and things like that. So um, I will say personally, though, when I'm teaching yoga these days and when I'm practicing yoga, that's not what I do it for. I just do it for a general feeling of well-being and relaxation. Um, another difference, I suppose, with yoga, when you're practicing yoga, it can often be just your body on a mat with limited props. So you might have a strap, a bolster, a cushion and a blanket for relaxation. When you practice Pilates, you can have just a mat and a whole heap of other apparatus. So we've got reformers, um, we have the trapeze, the Cadillac, the barrel, the ladder, the wonder chair. So there's a whole heap of different apparatus that we use. Um, yeah, so I guess another thing is when, when you're doing yoga or Pilates, you'll often move through similar poses. So downward dog is a pose you might know if you've done yoga before. When we do Pilates, we do the exact same thing with our body and we just call it a pike. Um, but if you're doing it in yoga, supposedly downward dog is to ignite the solar plexus chakra, which kind of sits supposedly behind the belly button. Um, if you're doing a pike in Pilates, it would be more for kind of developing a little bit of overhead strength and stretching out the back of the body. Um, 
So moving on, I might talk a little bit about the difference between general Pilates and clinical Pilates. And um, I'll tell you right now that they are exactly the same movements. So if you're in a clinical Pilates session and a regular Pilates session, you'll probably be doing the same exercises. But what differs is the outcome that we're looking for. So often in a clinical Pilates setting, it might be someone who's recovering from an injury. Um, it could be someone who's pregnant, looking to get their body really strong before their baby arrives. You might have someone postnatal who's wanting to regain their strength after the arrival of their baby and get um, their pre-pregnancy body back. It could be somebody who's had surgery, um, somebody with a musculoskeletal condition. You might even just have someone who's healthy but they haven't exercised for a very long time so their body's quite deconditioned and clinical Pilates would be a good place for them to start. Um, so in clinical Pilates we'd often be looking to improve strength, uh, mobility and just restore general function in the body. Um, and how is that different to a general Pilates class? So if you're joining a general Pilates class that's at, aimed at um, pretty much anyone in the general population who's probably, I'm going to say probably injury free or maybe, maybe in the very later stages of injury rehabilitation, so most of their body would move fairly well um, and have a reasonable degree of fitness. So in a general Pilates class you'd probably find you'd be working through full body strength. Um, so in my classes I always like to include a horizontal push, horizontal pull vertical push, vertical pull, some kind of squat or lunge movement and um, then different movements of the spine like rotation, flexion, extension, lateral flexion and so forth. Um, so a lot of people when you, when I speak to people about what Pilates is, people often say core strength and yes, definitely core strength is involved but it's not just that. So Pilates is not only just for core and it's not just for back injuries. It can kind of benefit everything from top to toe. Um, let's see, do I have anything else to add to that? Does anyone have questions? Such a lively bunch. Um, with clinical, I do one-on-ones or three in a small group. Um, the way, way I usually work with my clinical ones, because I've just started at Reflex, is I'd have a one-on-one -on -one session first and um, run through a strength and mobility assessment and have a chat with the person about what their goals actually are. So I kind of like to make it my mission to get that person out of the clinical space and back into, either back into a group Pilates class or out into the community doing the gym or playing sport or whatever it is they like. Um, so I have up to three in clinical groups at the moment. Um, and with, yeah, with the mat and reformer classes, I don't really have an upper limit on that. I'm happy, happy to work. Like in, in the past, like my largest classes have been up in the 50s, um, but these days it's quite smaller numbers. Um, are you asking for my own practice or what I would do with Which clients? Which instruction and to take part in, basically? Um, I, I love teaching people on the reformer. That's my favourite thing to teach. My own workouts, though, I much prefer the mat Pilates. Yeah. Mm. And it's just, just a shame because that's my passion, but most people, um, most people seem to like the reformer day these days. It's very popular. Mm. Any, Any more questions? questions? No? All right. Thanks, guys. I'll just... Um... <laughs> Thanks, Blake.